Last time on Reckless Attack. The party continues their journey down the runic road on their way to Agmar. Although the imminent threat of the Grung has been averted, the world of Rixia continues to prove that danger is never lurking far behind. As Selv is trapped and isolated by a cunning new threat, will he survive the night? Or will the party awaken to a fallen friend? Find out this week on Reckless Attack. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Reckless Attack. <laughs> I appreciate that response from exactly two of you. Yeah. <laughs> and the dead <laughs> silent the well, program, guys. You, you got, uh, I'm sitting here kind of freaking out because I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, right. I, <laughs> that, that makes sense. All I know is, all I know is, I, I got asked a question. So, self's claustrophobic, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was weeks ago I asked you, well, what would you say his greatest phobia is? And, ooh, and well, here we like are. Like an idiot, I answered. Yep. <laughs> well, I told him the truth. Hey, everyone, we're Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition podcasts. We play D&D uh, and we are friends who like to play it. And my Welcome name, to Reckless Attack. Yes. Welcome. This is what we do. And I'm Nathan. I'm your dungeon master. Thank you all for listening once again. It has continued to be a wonderful thrill, not just to be playing with all of my lovely friends and just having some of the best times ever, but also of sharing all of our just dumb things with you guys. And some people enjoy it. And that's pretty cool. And thank you to all of you for letting us enter your ear space. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Inviting us into your ear space. But that's enough from me. To my left, I would like to please have this person introduce themselves dot 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 gesture hi it's me sophie (laughs) i play valeska the human asterisk cleric of the arcana domain and oh boy i (laughs) thought we were just gonna ride into the city yep nope nope so go for it yeah (laughs) all right hi everyone it's jonathan here (laughs) And I play Checkers, the Grung Druid, along with his trusty frog pal, Mango. And, and Junior. And Junior. Checkers has more or less developed a fear of ostriches in forests <laughs> and is coming to terms with that. Oh, so you're saying that's a, would you call that a phobia of yours? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, interesting. It's, it's, interesting. It's, it's getting there. Okay. It's getting there. If they show up again, we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> Roll for sanity. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But that is Checkers. Hi, I'm David, and I play Kaskrin Brightmane, the Dwarven Warlock. Kaskrin has been enjoying a nice evening, finally not on watch for the first time, up until about 15, about two minutes ago, <laughs> when possibly something has happened, maybe? You don't know yet. You're asleep. I'm still Idiot asleep, so yeah, dwarf. I guess. Well, I guess I'm enjoying a regular night where nothing <laughs> happens. Wow, isn't it nice to be on the road where no attacks or anything of note happens? Yeah, this is wonderful. No weird tree ladies are gesturing me to go any deeper into the forest. Wow, successful watch. And to my left. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve. I am playing, at least for the time being, for now. depending on what happens, I am playing Sylvesterlin, the dragonborn monk. And he's kind of in a predicament at this point where he might be either frozen with fear or getting eaten or blinded or I honestly don't know, but there is a large deer skull facing him and pressed against his forehead, I believe is face to face with you. Yes, indeed. The second thought in his brain is that's got to go. But his first thought is, oh, my God, I'm trapped. Yes. And to my left. It's me. (laughs) So yes, we find our stalwart adventurers not but a few hours away from the Red City of Agmar, the place that they have been traveling to all this time, their eventual destination, their home base for all of the great adventures and discovery that is to come in their adventuring careers. A lovely night of watch went by. Nothing of note happened other than one murderous cry from maybe some sort of bird. Who's to say? Oh, and also at the end, while Selv was on watch, from out of the black darkness of night, a strange, giant, again, deer 
is the closest mortal brain approximation you can make to this thing. But a skull of a creature came hurtling out of the darkness and hit you square on and has now enveloped you totally and is currently squeezing you and giving you the feeling of one of your greatest fears, claustrophobia. Self, could you please talk a little bit about Self's phobia, about why he is afraid Ah. of this and why it is so affecting to him to be experiencing this in this moment? Self grew up outdoors in the mountains where everything is large. There's a huge open sky above him. He's high up in the mountains and everything, the whole monastery where he grew up was designed to be open and to incorporate the idea of flight and Mm -hmm. being high up, being able to see everything around you. And so he does not have a lot of experience being underground or in small places Mm -hmm. because anywhere he went, he was always able to see either the opening that led outside or the sky itself and just having the wide open expanse above him. And also, he's a silver dragonborn, and they like to be flying around. They like to be out in the open. They like to be, you know, essentially. They are the most extroverted uh, Uh dragons, I guess. They don't just kind of sit in their lair on their giant hoard of gold. They actually go out and meet people and try to help people. And so, Selv himself has not really experienced being trapped or being in an enclosed area for any length of time. So, just to have this feeling now of just being trapped and having nowhere to go. His mm-hmm. lungs are tightening up. It's hard for him to breathe. Mm-hmm. He just can't get air in. And so it is probably going to affect him or come out in some kind of scream shortly. Yes. <laughs> so, everyone, roll for initiative. Ooh. Okay, okay. Checkers with 20. Ooh. Kaskran with 21. Ooh, what? Dang. What did you roll? A 21? Uh, 18. <laughs> Selv with a 14. And then for posterity, what, what, what did you get, Valeska Carter? Seven. She got the number one spot next round. <laughs> yeah, that's true. In case it makes you feel any better, Val, everyone's asleep. So mm-hmm. no one at the top of the round can do anything until Selv hopefully alerts some people. I can heal everybody when they die. <laughs> Good. Yay. I'm not liking those four question marks that have shown up on the initiative order. Yeah. Right. So I wrote that. I like to write write it down in front of everyone, the initiative order when we're in combat, just because it's it really speeds things up. And I have Cass. I have check. I have four question marks. I have self. I have Val. And <laughs> it's that, obviously the Riddler. Right. That's all the information <laughs> you'll be getting from me. Thank you very much. So, Kaskrin, what are you dreaming about? Kaskrin is dreaming of I want to say pancakes is the first thing that comes to mind you recently got to smell a big egg scramble so that does make sense maybe you have a lot of residual breakfast vibes from the wonderful egg scramble that Val cooked for a dejected checkers last episode that's probably what's doing it. We were there like, cooking it with her, so... We, like, passed by some maple trees, like, something <laughs> happened. Just the yeah. right neurons in your brain all fired. Yeah, so that's what he's dreaming of. All right, well, great first turn. Uh, Checkers, what are you dreaming about? Checkers is doing that, like, dog thing where they dream about their running, and yep. then their <laughs> limbs start moving and twitching. <laughs> so he is just, like, his oh legs are, like, kicking, and his arms are moving around as he's like... Bah, 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 bah. And then his arms are like twitching around as he's dreaming of just hopping and running away. You're not dreaming of running away from Demon Ostrai. <laughs> he, he might. He might be. It might. It like started as a dream and then turned into a nightmare, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> got it, got it, got it, got it. Well, wow. Two stellar, succinct yet flavorful turns. Great job, guys. I really hope that you keep exactly that up for the rest of combat. <laughs> now it is this creature's turn. Selv, so, a few things happen. While you are the target of this creature, you have the frightened condition. It gives you disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. While the source of its fear is within your line of sight, it is within your line of sight in that it is pressing against your face, and the creature cannot willingly move closer to the source of its fear. Well, that's not really an issue. Which, great news, (laughs) you're also grappled, as it has fully enveloped you. So, that's just kind of the current existence of self. But now it's the creature's turn to do something. Could you please make me a wisdom saving throw, please? Oh, I would be delighted. 
total of seven. That's a fail. I may not surprise you to learn. Note, I have picked up a D4, everyone. Oh. <laughs> I rolled a four on the D4. So that means you take three points of wisdom drain. Oh, no. So your wisdom score is lowered by three. What this thing is doing, and again, just imagine this skull that doesn't even feel like bone. It's indescribable. It's alien. And you don't know whether it is because it is alien or because you are so consumed by fear that like your brain is like, I cannot think about this right now. But it is pressed up against your forehead, just almost vibrating with energy and power and stifling feelings. And all of this strange blackness, like you said, is constricting your entire body and is suffocating you. And it feels absolutely inescapable. Even though I, I uh, finding it very difficult to breathe or move or do anything, Selva is just going to try to suck in as much air as mm-hmm. possible. And then he's just going so to scary. just scream out as loud as he can. Let me out. And going to try to move uh, uh, away from this thing. Okay, so you would need to use an action to try and break the grapple. Okay, so that is an athletics roll? Yes, and it is an opposed athletic or acrobatics roll. Oh, acrobatics might be even better. Ooh, um, use my new purple die. Uh, we'll go acrobatics. So that is going to be plus four at disadvantage. Ten? Roll a ten on the die. Are there any bonuses? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Yeah. Okay, then I guess I am currently stuck there. Okay. Val, what is your passive perception? It is not great. My passive perception is 13. That is enough. Not to hear self, but what you hear are two voices from outside of... I don't know if you are sleeping under the stars or if you are in the wagon or what, but what wakes you up, no matter where you are, are you hear two voices shouting and in panic and are just like, oh my God, what is, what is that? What is that? Get it, get it. Come, come help, come help. So you, I'll just say you bolt, I assume, right? Yeah. <laughs> at that sound. And what you see happening, one person from the caravan who literally looks like has some sort of like a broom that they are hitting a writhing mass of blackness just a few feet away from your caravan, Mm -hmm. just absolutely going to town, (laughs) smacking it. And then you see a guardsman trying to stab at it with like a spear or something. Mm -hmm. And obviously that is startling in and of itself. But also what you notice is that there is another person who's on watch a few feet away. Mm -hmm. And this person who has weapons is just looking over at the commotion, confused. Not panicked, just Mm -hmm. just reacting as if they're seeing a strange scene as opposed to what you're seeing, which is some sort of writhing mass. And the guy, that is the extent of his reaction. He's just like, oh, wait, what? What's going on over there? Do I see anything inside this writhing mass of darkness? Roll me a perception or insight check. Vibe check. Yep, vibe check it. Ten. <laughs> Get out of here, die. That That is enough. It is not far away. You can't exactly tell what's going on. You can see that it is writhing around and kind of undulating in mm-hmm. strange directions. It could be some someone or something inside, but also it could just be, look at this freaky thing Mm -hmm. and look how weird it moves around yeah would it be another insight check to identify anything about this mass or is that like too much of an action no I'm fine with that I would particularly love to know if it is a celestial elemental fae or fiend Uh, well so that one okay roll me an arcana check 17 you don't know what this is fuck even at a 17. But what you do know is that it is not something you recognize of the natural world. Mm -hmm. And kind of using process of elimination, I will happily give you the information that this thing is an aberration. Okay. But you do not not know what it is. 
either because you aren't getting a good look at it or because it is something strange that you have not seen before. Ah, fuck magical darkness, writhing mass. I will cast Mind Sliver. Okay. It needs to make a DC 13 wisdom saving throw. Uh, Natural 20. Well, fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, Val will, as a bonus action, Val will punch (laughs) Catherine to wake him up and yell for checkers. Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh (laughs) Cass! Checkers! Top of the order, Kaskarin, uh, Kaskarin, you get punched. Punch or kicked, whichever one's easier for me. The pancakes float away from you. The pancakes, no. Or the pancakes have just punched you. (laughs) That's your own psychological question to answer. Kaskin reflexively just rolls out of his cot and grabs a dagger from somewhere <laughs> and is like, what, what, what's going on? Val just points to the writhing mass. Uh, metagame wise, there's no reason that Kaskin would know that this is potentially interesting or distinct. Yeah. You can see this as well. Okay. I see the writhing mass on the ground. I'm actually going to do the same thing and try to figure out what it is first. He has this quizzical look and he is also going to try to investigate what this darkness is. Val would have also yelled for self because she does not see Oh, him. of course. You would be able to see. I don't know where Checkers and Cass are, but yeah, you don't see self, but you don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. Good call. Thank you. Inspiration, Sophie, for yeah! remembering Art. for being present. Also, be sure to check what inspirations you all have. <laughs> I have one inspiration. In case you want to use it. For any listeners at home, I know technically inspirations, I think they're usually supposed to be given one max and you're supposed to use it by the end of the session, but we also like having inspiration and also we record weird because podcasts and we don't get long sessions, so they get to hoard it like little goblins and use them as consumables (laughs) and never use it until the end. But still only one at a time. Exactly. So Kaskrin. As part of my turn, I'm trying to also investigate it. Is it an arcana roll or do I just? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 16. You would also know that it was an aberration. Okay. Um, or at least that is your best guess in terms of if you have abilities keying on aberrations, you'd be like, it's worth, it's probably worth a shot, you yeah. know? <laughs> Kashkin will get a little bit closer to this thing. Does he also see the confused man yes. out so, a little bit? So I'm going to say you can see, uh, what's your passive perception? 11. You can see the same scene that I described to Val. Uh, There's one person who is just kind of incredulously looking over. You see two people panicked, beating (laughs) beating this writhing mass, and you see the mass. Does the other man look like a soldier, or does he look like a regular civilian? The guy who's watching? Yeah, the guy who's watching. It's probably hard to say a little bit, but he is someone who is armed and seems to be reasonably attentive and reasonably present and capable. Kaskrin yells at him, You! Get the others. Wake them up. Something's happening. Come grab your weapons. And tries to get him to run and grab some other people. Okay, roll me a diplomacy check. Or whatever is appropriate. Persuasion. So that's going to be 22. Okay. So the guy looks over at you and kind of shrugs almost because he clearly doesn't understand what's going on. But as a good soldier, just does it anyway. <laughs> and he turns uh, and he starts uh, calling other people over. Okay. Say, hey, uh, something's happening. Get, get over here. Get over here. And you hear some commotion coming from kind of over in that direction. For the rest of my turn, I see that there are two other people stabbing at this thing. I'm going to get up close to this darkness, take my dagger, and also take a stab at it and see what happens. Okay. Give me an attack roll. Ten. That is a miss. I imagine like my dagger sort of penetrates the darkness a little bit, but just nothing happens. Like there's no feedback. Yes. And it almost like redirects your dagger as if, uh, again, it undulates up a little bit and deflects it. You didn't strike quite true enough. And then it had no problem just kind of batting you away, essentially. Casquin has that same confused look as the man. He doesn't quite know if it's dangerous yet. He just knows it's weird. And that's his turn. So normally Checkers, when woken up, would probably be pretty upset at having uh, been interrupted once again. But when he hears the tone in Valeska's voice and also just the urgency that Kaskarin is shouting at people with, he knows something has gone wrong. So he's going to sort of roll out of the tree that he is sleeping in, sees Cass trying to stab this massive darkness. And you also see it. 
Sounds good. Sees people starting to move around, trying to like try to beat this thing with a broom. Val, I don't know what's going on, but here goes. He's going to conjure up three frog stones and just like hurl one at the darkness to just react to something right now. Give me an attack roll. I, a- I attack the darkness. Right. That's <laughs> going to be a 14 to hit. That hits. Roll me some damage. All right. And this is magical if it matters. That's going to be eight points of damage. Okay. A couple things. First, it seems to do less damage than you think. <laughs> and self, you take two points of damage. You don't know that, yeah, though. That's fair. But uh, what you do notice is, again, it like seems to kind of bounce off in an unsatisfying way. <laughs> yeah. So it just like it chunks into this thing, but then kind of doesn't seem to quite make the impact that a normal stone would. Yes. Val, what is this thing? How did it get here? What's going on? I am figuring all of that out right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> that is a le- work in progress. We're all learning together. Okay. <laughs> and then he would also just quickly look around. Kaskarin, Velasca, Checkers. Where's Salve? Where's Mango? <laughs> Where's Mango? Man- Mango probably would have... Checkers <laughs> always knows where Mango is. <laughs> Checker, yeah, Checker, Mango would still be by the tree where they're sleeping. D- d- does mechanically Checkers always know where Mango is? No. Okay. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sure what the level of connection... No. But mentally there he was. does. Yeah, emo- like emotionally. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now it is its turn. A couple things are going to happen. First self, could you make me a wisdom saving throw, please? This is just regular, right? Correct. <laughs> yep, uh, with just straight roll, no disadvantage. It's a four on the die, which is not going to be enough to... No, it's not. <gasps> I rolled another four. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. So you take another three points of wisdom damage. The die hard die are too good. Get them out of here. You're yep. not allowed to use them. We decided earlier they were too powerful. My yeah, contest like winning dice roll. are actually too powerful right. once again. <laughs> um, yeah, that was actually what rolled the, the uh, natural 20. The sand has been charged too much. All right, all right. Get you know, I'll, 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 I, want this to be, I want this to be fair destruction of self. <laughs> and then, in addition, you see that same thing that undulated out of the way as it dodged your dagger attack, Kaskrin gives you a slap ooh not good though 11 to hit I assume that doesn't hit even if you were unarmored or what have you I'm just like super tent ready for anything I just barely dodged this slap yeah but so it tries to reach back out and defend itself by trying to hit you that is the end of its turn self how you doing buddy not so good (laughs) Um, so I do have a question though am I considered blinded no, I don't think so. Okay, there you have enough I, I going can see on. The, 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 yeah, the exactly, okay. and and that feels a little silly. Like <laughs> it maybe technically makes sense, but also is like there's enough. Okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, the important bits: you can't move, and you're very scared. Yes, the rest of it is whatever. Could I hear Val or Checkers or Cass? Yes, so you can hear. It's muffled, and it's almost that kind of like ear ringingly quiet but you can hear these other two caravan people who are trying to do something and especially Kaskarin who is up close you can hear him okay totally clearly so, albeit muted if self wasn't frightened i know what i would do but because he is and because this is not what he wants to be and he's not actually thinking rationally mm-hmm. so what i'm going to do is basically start like clawing in order to get out of this grapple and just kind of get this thing off of me. I, I want this off of me. I guess that would be another acrobatics roll to try to get out. Okay, you're going to try and escape. All I'll right. use my turn to do that, yeah, and that's a disadvantage. Ooh, rolled pretty uh, bad. Nine, uh, 13. Uh, you succeed. Oh, hmm. so wow. describe what everyone else sees as self We'll say successfully extricates himself. Okay. So when Selv is on watch, you know, he's typically sitting cross-legged and has his staff on his lap in front of him perpendicular to himself. So when this thing hit and wrapped around, Selv had one hand on the staff and then was using his other hand to claw to try to get out. So what he does is he pushes on the staff to get just a little tiny opening, Mm -hmm. just something where he could see the outside. And as soon as he does that, he just he pushes with all his strength and then rolls the other direction. You kind of see this like staff shaped point kind protrusion. of come, <laughs> protrusion. Protrusion. Yeah, come out of the darkness. And then Selv just explodes out the other side <laughs> in like this roll. Just kind of rolls a couple times on the ground. I'm assuming is still prone or does he have movement? 
you can flavor however you want, but once you break out of the grapple, you no longer have movement restriction, so you can move you can okay. move as much as you are able to well. Okay. So he kind of rolls about ten feet on the ground and then kicks a bit and somersaults and stands up. You can see even though it's been hot out, and you know that self sweats, you never really see it, but kind of in the campfire light and the, the light from whatever's reflecting off stars, moons, what, you know, whatever's, whatever's yeah. reflecting down there, you see, and he's breathing really hard, his eyes are wide, and you see he's covered in like the sheen of sweat, and he's, he kind of looks almost feral at that yeah. point, and he most definitely does not look calm and serene anymore. <laughs> no. This is one severely scared self. Well, that was awesome. Take an inspiration. Hey. Ooh, ooh, yeah. That was... Thank you. Perfectly done. Well, that was... It was a perfect picture in my head. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you for getting us to over 1,000 followers on Twitter. In honor of this momentous occasion, we here at Reckless Attack have decided to thank each and every one of our followers personally during this mid-roll. So... In alphabetical order, A. Aloysius Abernanthy, thank you. Albert Austin, thank you. Aster Allington. Hi, everyone. It's Nathan here with the mid-roll. This week, we had a really big milestone over on Twitter. We broke a thousand followers. Hopefully in a year's time, this will be like, oh, how quaint. Look, they have turned into a multimedia million dollar conglomeration. And oh, look at them celebrating their thousand followers. But hopefully this also keeps us humble, uh, reminding us how truly special and meaningful it was to have so many people interested in us, interested in supporting us and interested in just kind of interacting there. And we really had no idea what to expect when we entered into this space. Um, we thought we had something that people might like. We thought that we would have a pretty good way to promote it, to put it out there. But we were also very okay and had kind of steeled ourselves knowing that we might just put it out there and no one would listen, but we would be having fun and we would have done something. And that being a great measure of success too. And to have uh, so many people come out and interact with us and be genuinely interested in what we do is really amazing and incomprehensible to all of us. So we wanted to take this mid-roll to thank you all for all the support, for all of the kindness, all of the wonderful interactions, all of the amount of times you guys have tagged us in frog memes. All of it is wonderful and welcome, and we cannot express enough how much we've enjoyed interacting with all of you guys on there. We want to be sure to shout out a couple of people, uh, not only who we've loved to interact with, but we're really instrumental in, in pushing us over the thousand uh, follower mark. These are all people on Twitter, so you can insert your own ats uh, before all of these people. Countess Cassie, Scald of Sheenan, uh, Magic Missile Pod, P Fizzle Bang, uh, Rahab Akatriel, underscore Akatriel, Klaus Von H, The Last Omnitech, The Burnt Coin, VA Redemption, D in Disaster Story, Lore Mistress 93, Lulu in Wa, uh, Washington is what it's short for, all underscore rants underscore day, all were really great in uh, in those last, uh, the last push to get us over a thousand. They are all over our Twitter because they're some of our favorite people as well. But again, this just goes out to to all of the fans, all of the supporters. Uh, we we would be doing what we're doing without you, but you make it a lot better to do. So we appreciate you. And again, your support and interaction means everything. Um, but that's all for me. Thank you. Z Zalarian Zanzibar. Thank you. And finally, Zesty Zoolander. Thank you. We now return you to our regularly scheduled Reckless Attack broadcast. Selv is out. You guys see this writhing mass and Selv <laughs> <laughs> extricating himself very dramatically from it. And you still see these two people again, like beating it, but now are confused and are, they're also processing the information that a, a dragon man has just emerged from out of this strange dark thing, but they are still beating the crap out of it. And then remind me two things. 
at the start of its turn, something is going to happen. And also, Selv, you are still frightened, but you now will get saves at the end of your turn to try and stave off the frightened condition. But once you are in its grasp, you are frightened. Like, you know, that's why I didn't ask you for anything. So, Val, you see Selv emerge from this again, feral, just panicked. You see these people still beating away at this thing because they still don't know what it is. But also, oh my God, there's this dragon guy that has emerged and we didn't know that. And oh God, what's happening? What do you do? As soon as she realizes that Selv was consumed by this darkness, she yells out, Selv! And rushes towards him. And as she does, she pulls a water skin from her hand and blesses it to make it holy water. Cool. Cool. And blesses it, just like running it across her hand and muttering a prayer, and then just touches Selv's back to cast protection from good and evil. Ooh, cool. <laughs> nice. Seems like I Thank might you. not die. <laughs> <laughs> and then Val will use the rest of her movement to back away, back towards the wagon, but in a not far enough away where she can't come in and support Selv. Yeah, you are just taken a few steps back. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, and also just to reset the scene, the three of you, uh, the non-selves, still have not seen the skull. So right Mm -hmm. now, you just saw Selv emerge from this blackness, and it is still moving around, moving erratically in ways that you thought, you know, you would think as an observer, like, oh, oh, it was Selv trying to get out. It's still moving in that strange, herky-jerky, disconnected way where it's like, there's no way that this is bones. There's no way that anything normal could be moving like this. Top of the order, Kaskrin. So again, guards are still a little off in the distance, but you feel like some folks will be approaching soon. Are there still torches nearby? Yeah. This is pretty much either just off or right on the road itself. Okay. So all totally well lit enough other than the fact that this is somehow absorbing all the light. <laughs> There's a moment where Kaskrin sees Selv free himself from the darkness and it just takes him a second to register that he was in this thing. Kaskrin yells to the person who is beating this darkness with a broom, grab the torch and bring it here and kind of also push the other soldiers back from this a little bit mm-hmm. to try to clear some space now that this darkness is writhing by itself. He takes his own step backwards and readies an Eldritch Blast. Okay. He is going to throw this javelin into this darkness to see what happens. But first, it's going to take an attack of opportunity against you. Cool. Uh, oh, well, you guys made me switch off of my cool die, Mm. and now it's all ruined. It's a roll of friggin' five. It's all, nope, you're going away. That is only an 11 to hit. That is a miss. Ah. So it's just writhing so erratically, I can't quite get a beat on it, especially... It blended into this darkness. Yes. So it just flies into the ground next to it. Yeah. And it just like kicks. I can imagine it like a Star Wars blaster bolt, you know, just like kicking up a little smoke and dust uh, where it hits. Yep. Cool. That is my turn. So Checker just is in the middle of trying to figure out where everything's going on. He's just like, there's Val. There's me. There's Kaskrin. Oh, there's Self. (laughs) As he bursts out of the darkness. He was hiding. (laughs) Guys, I found him. Yeah. (laughs) And he is hearing Kaskrin go for the torch as well. So he's going to try and follow up on that. He is going to pull out a vial of oil that he uses for the lanterns nearby. And he's going to try and seeing the, you know, the people starting to collect some torches, he's going to try and splash the oil onto this mass of darkness to see if that will help in the future. Okay, give me a ranged attack. Absolutely. Roll. Just your usual. Crit. Natural Nat- 20. Natural 20. Dang. Really wish you'd been doing any damage with that one, probably. Critical oil. Yeah, critical <laughs> oil. Get twice as much oil Okay, on so there. you guys see... Actually, you you describe it. What does yeah. is, is Checkers do to check this Yeah, over? so he just looks over at Kaskrin, kind of picks up what he's putting down, yeah. just grabs a th- vial of oil and just splashes it onto this writhing black mass. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even look like anything's changed because of just the sheer amount right. of darkness in this. But... Yeah. He sort of throws it on it and then just leaps away, hoping that when the torch ignites this creature, something big is going to happen. Awesome. And I'm loving the image of that. Like you said, almost you can't tell the difference, mm-hmm. but you just every once in a while catch that weird rainbow sheen right. on an, you know, like an oil slick. on an oil slick. Yeah. Exactly. It is its turn at the start of the turn. Kaskrin. Yes. You see both of these people who have been there and are just 
terrified out of their wits, are still beating at the thing. At least we'll take a quick swing. I know you, you want them to back yeah, up too, so right? Yeah, stand back a little bit. So they both take one last swing, seeing that it's kind of focused its attention on you. And you notice that the person, this is going to sound a little silly, but it will make sense. The person who has the broom is making full connections with this thing. Like you can see it is hitting it and it is reacting in the way that you would expect it to react in terms of like, ah, yes, this big stick is hitting a thing and it is stopping and clearly making contact. Whereas the person holding the spear is making contact and sees it and reacting to it, but it's also kind of having that weird reaction that both your and Checkers' attack did where it kind of hits, but it doesn't do as much damage as you would kind of think that it would. So they both take their attacks. There is no selve inside, so they both do... They do a total of 10 points of damage. Nice. Wow. Mm. I rolled very well. (laughs) And it helps that one of them has like an actual weapon. An actual weapon that's not doing as much damage as the not actual Yes, that's true. Oh, that's true. I actually didn't account for that accordingly. I will. Thank you for reminding me. Yep. yep we must yep. sweep it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweep the leg. Uh, but yeah, so one person is doing full damage to it, and the other person is not doing full damage, is kind of the is the takeaway. It is now its turn from 10 feet away, because you've moved, or you moved five feet back, yeah. but you're not in melee with it. Right. So you've taken your step back, and there's a moment of pause, and then you see what Selv saw. And you all see this skull emerge from the inky blackness, just almost like it floats to the top. It floats around and looks directly at you, Kaskrin, and from 10 feet away, it reaches out this same thing that it hit you with, this pseudopod, this whatever, and s- tries to hit you again with it. Okay. Ah, only marginally better. Damn it, friggin' other. I'm I'm switching back to the cool <laughs> ice. That is a 14 to hit. Just barely misses. I'm not wearing any Damn heavy it. armor, so. Yeah, I, I, you weren't sleeping in it. That makes sense. So that happens. And then you see lightning quick. The skull submerges back into the middle of this thing and then points forward and looks back itself. And it moves forward and is going to try and attack you again. At disadvantage because of the protection from evil. At disadvantage. Noise. Indeed. Ooh, get that good dice roll. Mm, you hear that? Mm, yeah. yeah. Ooh, it's good. I'm, I'm hearing yeah. two ones. Uh, two tens, actually, <laughs> which was is still... That is a 15 to hit. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit. <laughs> so it doesn't do any damage, but you are, you are grappled. You are not fully enveloped yet. You are not re-frightened. But you well, are now, I, I was still frightened, though. Uh, um, you're not uh, re-perma frightened, if that makes sense. Okay. So you'll still get a I normal. Still get a you'll still throw. get a saving throw at the end of your turn. Okay. Um, and you can all see this thing has leapt at Selv once more and has successfully glommed onto him and is clearly almost like the blob trying to sneak around the sides of him and pull him back inside of it, but is not quite able to yet. And then, at the end of its turn, you guys see a couple more guards move over. You actually see four people who come from the direction that Cask was kind of yelling for, and three of them look confused and are just kind of looking around at each other, looking at you guys, clearly who are doing something, and, and Selv is like, I would imagine, reacting. I'll just I'll put it that way, lightly. And they will literally say, like, well, 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 hold on, what's happening here? What's going on? We, we heard that there was some sort of attack. And the fourth one looks horrified and charges in and tries to stab at this thing. And we'll say he has a a sword, a short sword that he runs over. Uh, Natural 20. (laughs) So he rolled a one on his first die and a two on the second die. So still not great. And unfortunately, his damage does not do as much damage as you would hope it would. Hmm. But he does do damage. Do I take damage? You do not take damage. (sighs) Good. Not yet. You're not. Soon. But not fully. Not in the full hug. Soon. Mm-hmm. That is the end of their turn. So there is one more person who seems to be able to react and charged in quite dutifully and bravely. 
And the other three are all just looking at you all like you are out of your minds. Like something strange is happening. We don't understand it, but like we are not jumping in because we don't un- we don't get it. Selv, it's your turn. All right. Well, best bet. Still scared out of my mind. So the only thing I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to take a big intake of breath and I am going to try to freeze whatever this thing is. Yes. yes. Just... Okay. It is a saving throw on its part. Constitution saving throw. Roll the 17 on the die. That is a success. So it takes half damage, but it still takes some damage. Thank you, DM dice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> maroon, beautiful maroon die. Okay. Four points of cold damage. It seems to take all four points of that damage. And you can hear... Actually, yeah, I'll say everyone can hear this like... <laughs> as it takes this breath damage, but is still kind of glommed on top of you. But again, it takes full damage from you. Sam. And I, I am grappled? Correct. Okay. So no moving. Oh, uh, actually, I get to make a save, don't I? Yes. Oh, yes, you do. Uh, yes. Add advantage add for, advantage. Uh, Thank you. Good, for the protection good call. from good. So Ooh. 19, uh, and I'm still drained and such from 15. Saving throw is plus two, so that would make it minus one, which would make it an 18. I yes. Think. You pass. I think I did that math correctly. You are no longer mechanically frightened. I'm sure you may have some complicated feelings about the situation, but you are no longer panicked, essentially. Good. And I will also say that you will not have to make that save again unless it fully envelops you again. Okay. Val is <laughs> very confused. Yep, fair. That's reasonable. She knows 1% about this thing. Maybe two, as she saw the deer antlers. It's kind of one of those things where like, you know the, the animal kingdom mm-hmm. that it's in, and that helps, sort of, but like, cool, it's a mammal. Great. Is it? Because it's just like flowing darkness underneath a skull. Right. Who, who knows? But she is trying to remain, remain calm, but is panicking a bit. Yep. Sure. I would. And is confused why people are confused and can't see this thing. Which is, that's not a good thing. That for that adds a lot of confusion, I mm-hmm. would imagine. So she really wants to just like blast this thing right on out of here. So I will use my inspiration to cast Guiding Bolt. <laughs> nice. Mm. I think that seems good. highly, good. highly reasonable. Yes. Fuck. Uh, uh, 13 to hit. That hits. Oh, oh nice. Yes. nice. <laughs> it is strange and undulating, but it is also, it's not moving super quickly and takes up enough space that it's not super hard to hit. Cool. I'm using uh, our friend Ralph and Mary's wedding dice. <laughs> nice. Hi, Ralph and Mary. I hope you're listening. Hi, Ralph and Mary. And if not, you're dead to us. <laughs> Unhappy wedding. I don't mean that. Okay. Ooh, uh, ooh, nice. Just kidding. Yeah. Actually, you you guys extremely happy. Wedding. You guys nailed it. <laughs> w- a great wedding. <laughs> May you have marital bliss for all times. So their their three d six got me fourteen points. Oh, uh, wow. And yeah, then saw- my own d six got two, so a total of fifteen radiant damage. Okay. Oh, that does not do as much damage as you would hope it would do. Okay. Really? Anything else, Val? You'd like to do bonus move? What have you? I can't you's? cast two level ones. You cannot. Right? No. Well, Dang it, then no. Then I, then I have no bonus action. Okay, seems good. Top of the order, Kaskrin. So has the person that I asked to get the torch gotten the torch yet? So I'll say at least one to two of the individuals who came back have torches. No problem. I am actually going to try to get them to throw the torch at the creature. At self. In my, in my brain, I had like told them like, poke the thing with fire basically yeah sure and there was like a moment of hesitation where like self got re-grappled and castro was like no 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 wait don't do that but was not able to verbalize that quickly enough before they poke the thing with fire and so i'm imagining like this person who's gotten the torch is now like about to set to touch this thing and see what happens um well unless so i mean would they would they know enough so you know that's the thing so you would need to be able to describe what you mean because the people who have the torches seem to not see this thing. So what I'm going to ask, I don't need you to describe but, it. But they see me. Exactly, okay. exactly. So it's very much within the realm of believability and I don't need you to formulate it. What I will ask you, please make me a charisma check to represent your ability to articulate 
your orders to these people. Because it's a weird order where it's like, stab the air in front of the dragon person. And to get them to do it quickly seems like, roll me a charisma check. Yeah, I'm going to try to convince them just to poke the air in front of self with fire. Yeah, and it can be whatever charisma thing you think is appropriate. Seven. Did you use, do you have any inspiration? Not that I can recall. Ooh, but actually, uh, it's okay. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, see yeah. all these players, yeah. they want uh, their magic uh, items. <laughs> they get one remember. and they forget about it. Never remember. So I rolled a two on the die. But I can feel just like something, some mystical force in the air that just pushes the die over a little bit more. I'm going to use my lucky coin ability to re-roll this roll. Yes, the coin given to you by the mysterious stranger that you helped in the woods with the grung problem. 22. What? Ooh. Wow. Dang. That is much better. I just threw another two on top of that. Coin. Okay. So Castrum just like, just put the torch there, just stab the air in front of him. So they look at you still confused, but again, these people are at least either soldier enough or overwhelmed enough to hear a voice, a commanding voice, point them in the right direction. And we'll actually just say both of them with a 22. The two people with torches go over and both try to stab. Okay, what I will ask, and this is me, the benevolent (laughs) dungeon master. Once again, behold my generosity and my glory. As I ask, the next attack roll against this creature has advantage. Would you like to have that for your own self, or would you like to have it for them to stab torches? I would. Both are valid, but I just wanted to make sure to give you the option because, again, of my deep and abiding kindness. I appreciate that. One question then on top of that is, if they can't see the creature... Is the advantage possible with the guiding bolt? Uh, y- ooh, that's interesting. So what I'll say is that there's a weird faint glow and then it would cancel out. Because they would have disadvantage because it is invisible to them. And then they have advantage. And I'm just going to call that a wash. I would like to give the advantage to the soldiers that okay. are trying to, to set this thing on cool. fire. I like that. All right. So we'll do the first guy to do a stab. Roll the six on the die. So that's a miss. Ah. <sighs> And then the other guy is going to roll with disadvantage. That's a one on the first one. So they both take a swipe at it and are trying to light this. And you can see a couple of like almost vapors kind of catch. And so they are just barely missing this thing. But they're just like flailing their torches because they don't know exactly where it is. They're just kind of like reaching out and trying not to set self on fire. (laughs) But it's complicated. So I see that they are trying to set this thing on fire and being pretty ineffectual. So yeah. Kaskrin yells out, just, Love just idea. pull back, pull back. And he takes another Eldritch Blast and throws it at this creature. Cool. 19 to hit, four, eight points of force damage. Okay, it does less damage than you would hope it would do. Okay. So as the soldiers are sort of pulling back according to Kaskrin's orders, Checker just says, get out of the way, give me that. And... <laughs> moves to grab the torch from one of the individuals who are running away. Absolutely. He moves up to Selv, who he can see is being attacked and grappled by this mass of writhing darkness, and just says, Selv, this is gonna suck. (laughs) (laughs) And he moves to touch the creature covered in oil with the torch. Okay, give me an attack roll. I don't like it. Uh, What'd you roll? I rolled a three on the die. Do you have inspiration? I did not have any inspiration. Okay. Uh, It's not going to do it. I failed to hit the mass of writhing darkness. Well, it just, it retracts out of the way of you. Like it can feel the sensation and it just gets out of the way and you're not able to make contact with it. Ugh. End turn. It's its turn. A couple things are going to happen. First, the two people who were trying to help at the beginning, who can see, turn to Kaskrin and say, uh, what, what do we do? What do we do? Kaskrin's like panicking just a little bit at this point when like, you know, three people are trying to get at this thing with no success. And he says, just, just keep hitting it. Keep hitting it with the broom. Keep hitting it with the spear. Just go at it. Okay. <laughs> just go. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> so they both rush up together and the spear guy takes a jab at it and misses just entirely again. And this thing is is now just like wiggling just enough out of the way to 
dodge all the fire and stuff. And now another, I think I described it as a, as a spear coming at it. The guy, <laughs> the guy with the broom <laughs> rolls a 17 on the die <laughs> and uh, you see him run up almost like a batter and just like cross checks this thing and you can see it actually it breaks the broom handle across this thing's what you could call a back i guess but hits it so hard that it breaks so the rest of you guys see this person run up and break the broom handle over this thing and self you can see from your perspective you see this thing climbing up on you and you can feel it wrapping around you. And you're not frightened, but you can feel it welling up inside you again. And you see this huge skull staring blankly at you. you there's no eyes, but you know it is staring directly <sighs> at you, hyper-focused on you. And you see this person run up and crack it over this thing's back. And as it does it continues again this is all kind of happening at the same time it continues like climbing up on you having weird almost tendril like feelings all over your body and you see the skull collapse back into the blackness and all the bits that are stuck to you and are trying to once again kind of suffocate you slowly peel off of you as it almost folds back into itself into like a weird globule of darkness. And then it slowly shrinks and nothing is left. And that's where we'll end this week, everyone. Ugh. Broom guy, broom, broom guy. guy. Someone promote that man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Reckless Attack again. See you next week. Yay. Woo! Bye. Woo! Still alive. If you love Reckless Attack, you'll love the people who helped us make it possible. Our logo artist, Maggie Pearson, character artist, Borg Cinnabon, and website designer, Donnie Chung, put together all the visuals you see for our podcast. We have some fantastic music, too. Our opening and closing theme was written by Chicago-based composer Megan Carnes. We also use the works of Michael Gelfi and Alexander Nakarada for our background music. You can find all of their social media links and more info about them on our website, RecklessAttack.com. See you all next time.